But the president was asked directly, you know, are the Russians interfering with the U.S. Uh, election? And he was very careful about how he responded. Your reaction? Well, it's certainly a very diplomatic answer, particularly in re because in recent days, Putin himself has been asked the same question and has answered it a little bit more directly. Now, Putin said very there's a, a very, something very interesting uh, when asked about how much his regime has been involved in cybersecurity and hacking in the United States, particularly in the DNC hacks and coordinating with WikiLeaks. And he said, well, that's not something we do at the state level, which really left wide open what uh, other Russian entities are doing. And we've certainly seen a much deeper deeper interest from Russia in this election than we have, I think, since the 1980s and the end of the Cold War. Yeah, and there's been a lot of discussion uh, uh, about even, you know, cyber, uh, you know, cyber activity and misinformation, disinformation uh, campaigns to try to undermine American uh, democratic, uh, democratic um, values and institutions. I mean, you know, the president also says he and Putin had discussions about a cessation of hostilities in Syria. I, I want you to listen to this and then and discuss it on the other side. We have had some productive conversations about what a real cessation uh, of hostilities would look like uh, that would allow us both, the United States and Russia, to focus our attention on common enemies like ISIL and Nusra. Uh, but uh, given the gaps of trust that exist, uh, that's a, a, a tough negotiation. Nir, is it is it feasible? Is it, I mean, how can he bridge that gap of trust with Russia in order to reach an agreement on Syria? And there's a lot that fills that gap of trust, and in particular, definitions of who we, the United States, versus the Russians call terrorists. For example, the Russians are in Syria right now in support of the very regime that is bombing its civilians and cutting off humanitarian aid. Now what the Russians will tell you is that well they are helping fight the civil war and the terrorists there that often end up being the people the United States wants to support, the moderates and the civilians themselves. So that's mm -hmm. challenge number one, who are we even fighting and are we on the same page? The Russians are also engaged with Iran in the area so it's, it's a tough geopolitical puzzle and unfortunately it's getting to the point where I think all sides acknowledge that there really isn't a straight military solution to this. It'll have to be a diplomatic solution, which has been ongoing. Diplomacy is slow on the world stage. So we're not going to necessarily see uh, a coming off of this trip, a new treaty or a new agreement that's going to change factors on the ground. But at least the two heads of state are having this face to face conversation. And we're hoping that that'll move something forward. And now, Nayyar, the, the president is on his way to Laos for another summit where he may or may not meet uh, the new president of the Philippines. Um, this is a, a man who warned President Obama not to mention the, uh, his administration's controversial move of extrajudicial killings against alleged drug dealers, killings without due process. Here's what the president said about uh, any kind of potential meeting. Fighting narco trafficking is tough, uh, but we will always assert uh, the need to have due process and uh, to engage in that fight against drugs uh, in a way that's consistent with basic uh, international norms. Uh, and so uh, undoubtedly, uh, if and when we have a meeting, that this is something that's going to be uh, brought up. Gosh, the Philippines is such an important ally, and you have this new leader who has been openly hostile, even has sworn at and about President Obama. So, what is, should he have? Should he meet with him? I um, mean, you, you know, what's the what's the best case, worst case on this? Well, this is what the president also called uh, President Duarte, the uh, very colorful character, which I think is another very diplomatic term for a foreign <laughs> leader who has uh, openly and on the record been cussing at you. Uh, but the, this is interesting because part of world leaders meeting together uh, is the projection of power uh, in, for their own home country. And pre the president of the Philippines is not very popular for having disappeared about 2,500 people in his country where families uh, don't know where these people are. And he's done it all all under the umbrella of fighting drug trafficking. So it's an important issue for the United States to coordinate with the Philippines. They've been an ally of ours since World War II, but the president has gone back to his team and asked them if this will be a productive meeting uh, with considering the attitude that the Philippine president has been projecting.
the president of the United States, his final G20 meeting as president. He's almost juggling flaming chainsaws in the region at the same time, trying to sell the TPP uh, back here. Uh, certainly, certainly interesting times. Nayara Huck, thank you so much for walking us through it. Nice to see you.